Hello, I am Dr. Gunamuni Rahar, Assistant Professor at the Department of Anatomy, Gifu Medal College. Today I am going to say about the interior of the right atrium, internal part, not the external part of the right atrium. Okay. So, interior of the right atrium means internal part of the right atrium. So, you have to know some things. So, basically, internally, it consists of two parts, which contains one smooth part, this is known as the sinus panorum, and atrium proper. So, sinus panorum is the smooth part which lies posteriorly, and atrium proper which lies in the anterior part. So these two parts are separated by a muscle ridge and this is known as crista terminalis. So in this picture, suppose this one is superior vena cava and this one is inferior vena cava. So what happened? In this part suppose this one, yes this one is the border left border suppose this one is left auricle left auricle and this one is the border and this one suppose inferior border opening of the right atrium what will you get suppose this one is the cut mark yes these are the cut cut mark after reflection of the heart this part is the reflected part so in the reflected part you will get here like this type some muscle this way these are muscle pectinity here you will get this way so after cutting this will be some muscle these are known as musculi pectini huh? musculi pectineti okay now this is the superior vena cava, so it lies in the upper and posterior part of the atrium part and it directed downward and forward and it conveys the blood from the upper part of the body you know and it's not guarded by any valve so there is no any valve okay mm. this one is the inferior vena cava. so inferior vena cava, it lies in the lower and posterior part of the atrium and it lies close to the septum so it conveys the blood, venous blood from the lower part of the body. So here this opening is guarded by a rudimentary rudimentary valve like this type. Rudimentary valve. Okay. Stands in the rudimentary valve, this valve is also known as Eustachian valve. Okay, it's Eustachian valve. Eustachian valve which contains a concave margin see there is I have drawn like this way this one is the concave margins so in the concave margins so it's this is the concave free margin so it contains what right and one is the left horn so here what happened this right horn this right horn is continuous with the this one uh, when you hold this way one is one will be the right horn one will be the left horn okay so it contains what right horn and left horn so right horn is continuous with the crista terminalis this part i have drawn this one this way it actually lies which actually what happened crista terminalis what happened this one is the smooth ridge that lies inside the i have already mentioned this is divided into sinus panorum and atrium proper part internally and externally we have go between this superior vena cava and inferior vena cava there externally we will get one sulcus terminalis externally so just inside this one crista terminalis suppose after cutting this one will be the crista terminalis so this one crista terminalis after that there there will be some rough part that means the anterior to the this one this will be the rough part so in the smooth part so what i told this one is the eustachian valve eustachian valve the right horn is continuous with the crista terminalis and its left horn it left horn what happens it 
it continues with the infer horn of not infer it continues with the anterior anterior limb of limbus fossa ovalis here in the smooth part you will get one things this is known as the limbus fossa ovalis to you will uh, it will continues the left horn so this is the limbus fossa ovalis just in this part limbus fossa ovalis just in this part you will get one depressed part and this is known as the fossa ovalis this part is fossa ovalis okay again one thing is that here this this valve eustachian valve is actually these are formed by duplication of the endocardium and which contain some few muscle fiber also and these are this opening is also known as the rudimentary seminular valve also which eustachian valve okay now again here just anterior to the opening of the inferior vena cava this one is the opening of the inferior vena cava and in this area you will get the this part will ventricle definitely so atrium and ventricle there will be one opening and this is right atrioventricular orifice so in between this right atrioventricular orifice and anterior to the between the opening of inferior vena cava there will be one opening and this opening is known as the opening of coronary sinus in this area i have drawn in this area so this coronary sinus what happened it it also contains one semicircular valve in the lower part this is known as this incomplete actually semicircular valve and this is known as the thebesian valve thebesian valve okay again one thing in this area from the left horn of this one is the left horn left horn of the valve of inferior vena cava what happened there is one thing that is sub endocardial ridge that extending dorsally extending dorsally to the central fibrous body actually and central fibrous body which lies in the just nearby to the uh, opening of the atrioventricular orifice so this way here will be goes this is known as the tendon of todero this one will be the tendon of todero okay. in this area you will get I, I, I am not drawing in this picture so here, here you will get the opening of the atrioventricular of uh, atrioventricular orifice so so what happened in this area there is one triangle presence and this triangle is known as the triangle of coach in this area here just in this area there here will be the what here will be the opening this way so this part actually this part is known as the triangle of coach that means what is the triangle of coach in front this is base of the septal leaflet definitely septal leaflet of tricuspid valve behind by the intermedial margin of the intermedial margin of the coronary sinus and above this is tendon of todero so the, here you'll get one triangle and this triangle is known as the triangle of coach k o c H triangle of coach why this one is important in this triangle of coach the AV node lodges okay in between these two openings superfinava and infrafinava there is actually scarcely visible in men more prominent in quadruped animals there is one uh, intervenous tubercle in this area you will get the intervenous tubercle small conical muscular projections just immediately actually below the supervena cava it may be not here it may be a little bit upward part okay again in the wall in the septal wall in the septal wall what happened 
uh, there are minor openings, lots minor opening for any cordis minimi you will get. This one is known a uh, small small area. They are known as the Henny Cordis Minimi. So they are lies in the septal wall and sometimes what happens enterocardiac veins and sometimes the right marginal veins also open in the uh, open in the right atrium. So these things may be open in these things. Okay. One other things you have to say in the sinus minimum what you have good. So opening of supervena gava, opening of infravena gava. Then what are the here no valve, here is one valve, is this in valve and how their anterior this one is the right horn and left horn, right horn and left horn, how they are continuous. I have told you then opening of corner sinus where it lies. Okay, it's guarded by Havesian valve. Again, lots of foramina venerum, intervenous tubercle. So this one is the intervenous tubercle, intervenous tubercle. So these things you have to describe in the that lies in the sinus venerum part. Now atrium proper part. These are actually in front of the crista thermis. I have drawn this one when we give this one reflex. So in front of the crista thermis this one presents. So what are present in the atrium proper part? Number one, I have already told you what is the crista terminalis that lies inside and outside will be the sulcus terminalis. You have to describe the things. Then after that there are some parallel muscular edges which passes forward from the crista towards the right atrioventricular orifice. So they forms network in the interior of the right auricles also in this area you will get right auricle so right auricular this one auricular appendix is right auricular appendix is actually what happened these are a potential site for formation of thrombi which is if this loads to so what happened it can result pulmonary embolism too so then you have to say the interactal septum also in this area Interatrial septum which presents one is the fossa ovilis. I have already told you this one is developmentally from the septum primum. And again here you will be one limbus fossa ovilis, this green color. The so limbus fossa ovilis also known as the annulus ovilis. This is sickle sept, sharp margin, upper, anterior and posterior margin. Okay. This anterior limb, this anterior limb is the limbus continuous with the left horn of the pulp of the infravenagapha I have already told you. So this one actually limbus part is developed from the septum secundum. Again I have already mentioned about the triangle of coach. What is this one? So in the atrium when someone asks you uh, interatrial uh, inter septum then you have to save the fossa of release then limbus possibilis, then triangle of coach, what is it important? Then one thing you have to mention, torus aorticus. What is this actually? Right posterior aortic sinus. This is the non coronary sinus that arises from the ascending aorta. I have not drawn here. From the ascending aorta, what happened? They give one elevation in the anterior superior part of the septum in this area anterior super part of the septum it gives one elevation this is known as the thoras aorticus don't forget to mention about the uh, valvular opening that means valvular openings that means what happened there is the normal subjects okay there is one opening presence in between these two because these are two fossa ovilis is developed from septum primum and limbus fossa ovilis is developed from septum secundum. In between these two there is one opening present in 25% cases. And what happened? Through this way we can introduce in our specimen we can introduce one probe and this condition is known as probe patency of foramen ovile.
Now in front of this one, don't forget to say in front of this, all these things, there will be the atrioventricular orifice. So here in this area will be the atrioventricular orifice, suppose. So atrioventricular orifice, what happened? It contains tricuspid valve, which is oval in shape. This one valve is oval in shape. And here, this opening is known as the vestibule. It's almost vertical in in it. it's almost vertical. So the blood flows almost horizontally from right atrium to right ventricular, not above downwards. Okay. Now I'm going to say about the original heart specimen. Okay. So come, let's see. Focus here. This part, first of all, we have to see. We have to see. Focus. Do you give me the light properly here in this area? So what happened? You have to identify the different parts. So this is the ventricle part. This is already cut at ventricle part. This is not, we are not discussing today now about the ventricle. This is this part. That means this one will be the uh, which one supervena cover. In this area, you have to identify the supervena cover and the inferior vena cover. This is the opening of inferior vena cover and this is the opening of superior vena cover. This part. This part is the opening of superior vena cover. Okay, now just in the inside it you'll get the this one opening no? this one inferior vena cover opening this one is the superior vena cover opening superior vena cover opening this way yes this one is the superior vena cover opening and this one is the inferior vena cover opening so in this area i hope you understand Okay, in this area, this is this is the crista, uh, not crista outside definitely. This one will be the sulcus terminalis. So inside it, we'll get here the crista terminalis. So behind it, this part is the sinus venerum, and anteriorly, this part is the atrium proper. Okay. So this is the opening of supervenous cava. This one. This one is the opening of superior vena cava, and this one is the opening of inferior vena cava, crista terminalis. Now, here actually, what happened in this area? There is the valve. This one is the valve here in this area, right horn and left horn. So, when we hold this way, hold this way, there will be the right horn and this will be the left horn so from the right horn this one is extending extending the crista terminalis and from the left horn that means towards this side have you seen this one this one is the left horn so left horn is continuous with the this one in this area this one is the septum okay this one is the Septum, so in the septum, this one is the left horn. So, left horn is in this area. See this way, see this way, there is one limbus fossa ovalis. Okay, in this part, limbus fossa ovalis. So, this one is the fossa ovalis. Okay, here in this area, some rudimentary valve may be present, intertubercle actually not present here this is scarcely present intervenous tubercle in between these two venous just near it lies just below the supervena cava okay so now enter to it here this one is the opening have you seen focused here this is the opening for coronary sinus and here it's guarded by thebesian valve okay this is the atrioventricular, this one. This one is the focus in this area. Focus, focus. Okay, okay, focus. Mm -mm. This one. This one is the atrioventricular orifice. So here these are the cusps. And as a whole, this one is the vestibule. So in this area, in this area, this one is the coronary sinus. So this way here we will get the tendon of the 
so in this triangle in this area this one this one and in this area so there will be triangle and this triangle will be the known as the triangle of coach okay so in the interatrial septum this one is the interatrial septum this one is the fossa ovalis and this part is the limbus fossa ovalis and have you seen some small small opening in this area these are also small opening and can you focus in this area so small small opening they are present here actually so these are known as so these are known as foramina venera minimum so these are actually small small minute minute blood vessels and these are openings of veni cordis minimi okay so these are the things less in the smooth part and in the interatrial part actually when you say when you ask the what is the sinus venerum part you have to mention about the opening of supervena ova opening of infravena ova then about its valve then after the opening of coronary sinus then foramina minimum lots of hairs and intervenous tubercle then after that atrium proper which less enter to the uh, crystal terminalis this part you have to about the crystal terminus you have to mention then after that there is some parallel ridge these are known as, known as the muscular ridges these are muscular ridges are known as the musculopectini musculopectinity musculopectinity okay so again in this area in the muscular this atrium proper area you can see if you see from the outside this one is the this one is the right auricle so in the right auricle see what happens in the right auricle this is inside it can you focus nicely can you focus here this one okay this one inside it there are lots of muscular pectinity in this area so this one is the this one is the auricle okay inside it there is lots of muscular pectinity this area these are all of my all of muscular pectinity inside it okay here where thrombus occurs so you have to mention this part also and also you have to mention the interatrial septum what lies in the interatrial septums and what is the prop patency sometimes this way if you can focus there is the prop patency may be present which you can introduce a probe from this side from the right atrium to the left atrium okay. can you focus here in the aorta yes aorta have you focus can you focus yes these are see these are cusps cusps of the aortic valve so these are sinus in this area these are sinus okay 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 have you seen these are cusps okay so here from this part this one is the right side coronary artery arises from this and from this one left side coronary artery arises from this one left coronary artery and after that posteriorly this one is the opening okay so from this part this one is the non coronary this one is right posterior so non coronary sinus this one if this one is the non coronary sinus it keeps on bulging it keeps on bulging in the right atrium in this area this one is the bulging okay this one area and this bulging is known as the torus aorticus so don't forget to mention about the torus aorticus also okay so i hope you understand about the interior of the heart so what is the two parts about the two parts what is lies in this two part so thank you for watching this video so if you don't understand something please ask me thank you